Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We are in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 9, The Dynasty of Amsuman, uh, Shloka 46 today. Please repeat. Ye Vikshipta Indriya Dhyam Dhyam Devaha Te Svahridi Sitam Na Vindanti Priyam Shashvat Atmanam Kim Utam Apare Ye Vikship Tendriadhiyo Devas Te Svahridistitam Navindanti Priyam Shashvat Atmanam Kim Utapare Ye which personalities? Which personalities? Vikshipta Indriya Dhyaha. Who senses mind and intelligence are always agitated because of material conditions. Devaha, like the demigods. Te, such persons. Svahridi, in the core of the heart. Sitam, situated. Na, not. Vindanti, no. Priyam, the dearmost personality of Godhead. Shashvat, constantly, eternally. Atmanam, the supreme personality of Godhead. Kimuta, what to speak of? Apare, others, like human beings. Translation purport by His Vangres, Shila Isi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Fandara Acharya Viskun. Even though the demigods have the advantages of being situated in the higher planetary system, their minds, senses, and intelligence are agitated by material conditions. Therefore, even such elevated persons fail to realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is eternally situated in the core of the heart. What then is to be said of others, such as human beings, who have fewer advantages? Report. It is a fact that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always situated in everyone's heart. Ishvara Saravhutanam Hridashe Arjuna Tishtati. But because of our material anxieties, which are inevitable, in this material world, we cannot understand the Supreme Lord, although he is situated so near to us. For those always agitated by material conditions, the yogi process is recommended so that one may concentrate his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead within the heart. Jnana vastita tadgatena manasa pashantiyam yoginaha. Because in material condition, the mind and senses are always agitated by the yogi procedures like dharana, asana, and dhyana, one must quiet the mind and concentrated upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, the yogi process is a material attempt to realize the Lord, whereas bhakti, devotion service, is the spiritual process by which to realize Him. Maharaj Kathwanga accepted the spiritual path, and therefore he was no longer interested in anything material. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 1855, bhaktya amam abhijanati, only by devotion service can I be understood. One can understand Krishna, the Parabrahman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, only through devotion service. The Lord never says that one can understand Him by performing mystic yoga or by philosophical speculating. Bhakti is above all such material attempts. Anya bilashita shunyam, jnana karma dhyanavritam. Bhakti is uncontaminated, being unalloyed even by jnana or pious activities. Namidanti Priyam Shashvat Atmanam Kim Utapare. 
translation one more time. Even though the demigods have the advantages of being situated in the higher planetary system, their minds, senses, and intelligence are agitated by material conditions. Therefore, even such a elevated person failed to realize the Supreme Personality Godhead, who is eternal, situated in the core of the heart. What then is to be said of others, such as human beings, who have fewer advantages? So here, the, we are hearing the story of Katwang Maharaj. And uh, the deal was that he was invited by the devatas to fight on their behalf against the demons. So, uh, happens a few times in history, you can see in Mahabharat, that happens. King Dasharat also was invited to fight on the side of the demigods. And uh, other kings too. So, now this is interesting. He is invited from the human realm, from the earth, to the heaven. By the blessing of devatas, that was possible for him. And you must understand how pious he was that he could just do it in the very lifetime, or by blessing of devatas, but he did it. And uh, devatas invited him, he fought, and he was very good. He was never conquered in the battle. And uh, devatas said, we'll give you blessing. And he said, first you tell me how much life I have. What's the balance? And then they told him, you have a moment, muhurta. So then he said, okay, forget it. Forget the blessings. Now think of the Lord. Focus, focus my mind on the Lord. And uh, now this is the shloka answering, actually, why he did not take blessings of the devatas. This is the answer. We are right in the middle of the story. But the answer is that, you, if you see the previous shloka, huh? that... Um, the demigods are of three walls, wanted to give me whatever benediction. And now he's answering, why he refused? Shloka 46, why he refused, why? Even though demigods have advantage of being situated in heavenly plans, their minds, senses, and intelligence are agitated by material condition. Even they fail to realize supreme personality of God had eternally situated in core of the heart. So what's to speak of others? So basically he's saying, why I'm refusing blessing of devatas. First of all, he knew that devatas are not super perfect because they ask help for fighting demigods. Okay? If they are so powerful, why they are calling me human to help them fighting? That was his first realization. He understood they are not supreme. That's very clear. Yeah? Because they, oh, please come help me. And then you, I help you, and then, okay, I'll bless you now. All right? So in material world, yes, you do some work for me, I pay you, okay? Mm -hmm. oh, these are Gandhi's blessings. <laughs> so, so now they offer material benefit, but he knew even from before about the real spiritual situation, that God is the <laughs> Supreme Lord Vishnu, Krishna, and uh, he worshiped him even before. And even previous shloka, he said, even from childhood, I didn't have interest in material things. Because he was devotee. He was a devotee. So, uh, he was always aware. Whatever duty he was doing, he was aware that, yes, uh, I know what's the goal. Okay, I'm Kshatriya, I'll do my duty. Devatas are calling, yes, they're representatives of God. I'll help. I'll help. I'll do the seva. But I'll never forget that... Ultimately, ante Narayana Smritihi, I have to remember the Lord. I am servant of Lord. I have to always remember the Lord. Whatever I'm doing, whatever condition I am, any time, place, circumstance, I have to think of the Lord. Whether I'm doing surgery, or I'm Kshatriya, or I'm Brahmana, or whatever I am, I have to think of the Lord 24 hours a day. Externally, we are doing our duty for maintenance, for social relation, whatever. But we are not expecting, devotees are not expecting that, oh, that will give me happiness. Oh, that money will give me happiness. Material, prosperity, position, fame, properties. They, they don't expect this. They may get, they may not get. It doesn't matter for devotees. Whatever circumstances, Lord, you place me, fine, I'm fine. I'm just trying to serve you. Ahai tuki apratihata. 
That's, that's the idea of devotion. So in, in Khatwang Maharaj was a king and fought with Devatas. Psh, what a glory. He's not ordinary king, you know. And today's kings, they, they have to form political party, otherwise they have no any power legally. And then half of the castles, they turn into hotels to earn money. This today is Raja's state. <laughs> but, but here, look at this, Devatas called him. What a powerful king he is. You know? And then, then when moment came to, to be awarded for that fight, you know? first award was already there, victory and fame. And that fame is, um, you know, what the, what the Kshatriyas desire. That's their award, fame. Now, wealth, okay, wealth also comes, but fame is really why they fight for it. And now, uh, the King Kartwanga is recorded in Mahabharat. There is also given in Mahabharat. He did hundreds of sacrifices. He's very pious. And uh, his name is in Bhagavatam. Why? Because he was a good fighter. No, because he achieved the goal of life. He achieved perfection. He remembered Krishna in time of death. That's why he is recorded. That fame of devotion and service is better than fame of fighting. How many kings were good fighters? So many. <laughs> what do you do? Hare Krishna. So, the... This is really difficult to... Hare Krishna. Okay. So in any time, place, circumstances, we cannot stop Harikatha. That's another test for us. So the king achieved eternal glory because he fulfilled the goal of life. That's what it is. Now, Hanuman is not glorified for his strength only, but because strength was used in service of Ram, therefore he is glorified. Ravana was also strong, but we don't glorify him for strength. He was so strong. Kalash he lifted. Create the servant for Lord Shiva and his wife. No? So, is, so we should not misunderstand that by our qualification we are to be glorified, we are to be eternal, and the, but actually by the devotion it comes automatically. Without devotees wanted that he wants fame, he wants this, he wants devotee does want devotee wants service to the Lord, but. Uh, the fame comes automatically without any desire. Arjun didn't fight battlefield of Kurukshetra to become famous. All the ordinary kings, they would that. They would think, yeah, if I win, what uh, are uh, But the act is to please the Lord. Again, act is to please the Lord. And now this situation is very interesting. That you may say ordinary king from the human level, he is rejecting blessing of devatas. Means he, he has better understanding than devatas about the laws of the universe, about the constitutional position, about the soul's nature to be eternal servant of God. Means he has better understanding. He rejected advice of devatas. <clears throat> he could ask, uh, okay, Indra, just keep me with you in the heaven. He could have asked, Make me Indra. What will Indra do? They say any blessing you want. They will make some arrangements to Indras. <laughs> yeah? uh, he could ask any benefit, but he rejected. And he is now explaining, yes, even they cannot, even they are affected by material circumstances, by material condition. Even devatas cannot focus mind. Otherwise, why Indra challenged Krishna in Vrindavan? Why Brahma stole the cow? No? Why Vayu was helping, blowing the clouds over Vrindavan? All lot of devatas were in trouble by that Govardhan Lila. <laughs> they were exposed and they were in trouble. Because once you get the name, fame, position and power, then you have to hold to remain Krishna conscious, humble servant. Even in devotion service, if you start thinking, 
Oh, I have done this. I distributed so many books. I collected so much money. I built so many temples. I am holding big, big posts in the, what is that called, the government of ISKCON. You know? I'm big guru. All of these are, uh, again, designation that will bind us. We should always think that everything is mercy of Guru and Krishna. And not only theoretically think, but really accept it. And it's a fact. Who would give us donation if not for Prabhupada, that we are preaching what Prabhupada is teaching? You know? Who would give us uh, land? Who would buy book from us? You know? Why? Why they should? Who we are? We are nobody, no? But because Prabhupada spoke. And now it's so easy. Everybody knows ISKCON. Wherever you go, ISKCON, ISKCON, all doors are open. Prabhupada opened the door and we are walking. <laughs> How many doors are open? <laughs> but it's not. No? Okay, if you are so smart, start your own movement. Call it FISCON or something else. Give another name and try your luck. And then you see how it works. No? No? And manufacture your own philosophy. Don't copy. No? So it won't happen. So we have to understand that everything, any success in the spiritual life is by blessing of Guru. And when Prabhupada was asked, even though he perform all the activities. He say, if I have any credit, it is due to my Guru Maharaj's blessing. I have no qualification on my own. My only qualification is that it, I did not uh, change anything. I follow as it is. I took sincerely instructions of my Guru. That's, that's what proper. I took sincerely instructions from my Guru. So, now, when moment in life comes that we have to surrender, that is every moment. <laughs> but when challenge comes, we have to see, even if devatas are advising us something, we have to see, maybe we should reject this offer. King Kathwang, he rejected devatas' offer because it was not conducive in his Krishna consciousness. What illusion? You are going to make me Indra, I'm going to die. Then where I will go? Now I have to remember the Lord, forget it. One muhurta he had, one muhurta. I don't know which time was calculated, Devata's time or human's time, but at maximum he had 48 minutes, you know, which is very short time. And it's very interesting that he was so focused, so Krishna conscious, that he did not get bewildered. 48 minutes, one muhurta you have, or whatever, one moment. In Devata's place, one moment, bang, gone. No? He was so sober, so conscious. Kingdom, opulence, heaven, forget it. Sit, close your eyes, focus on the Lord, form. Perfection achieved. This is the thing. When the moment test comes, time of death comes, he did it, he succeeded. He did what we have to do. All of us, we have to do this. All of us, we have to do this. No? No? We're chanting, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. We're traveling in car and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Some lorry is overtaking and man is calling, Oppa, Amma, what up, Amma? Till now you are chanting. Continue, shout more, Krishna, Krishna. No? Not Oppa, Amma, they won't help you. They have no potency to help. Devatas have no potency to help. Devatas are not giving moksha. No? Mukti pradata sarvesham vishnu reva na samshaya. Mukti you want, you have to approach Vishnu. So, so, Devatas offer something, we reject. In life comes like this. Some good job is offered. I have to put on scale. Okay, this job will make me more Krishna conscious or take my time from Krishna consciousness. Finish the business. One moment decision is taken. Correct? Uh, we have to reject. Prahlad Maharaj has to reject his father. He was not helping him in Krishna consciousness. Bharat Maharaj rejected his mother. Like a, she did not act according to Dharma. She displayed, she acted against the Ram. No? Against the Dharma. No? Rejected. Correct? Bali Maharaj has to reject his guru. His guru told him, you do karmakanda, you do charity, you do yagyas. 
will prosper in life. <laughs> we'll, we'll go to heaven, you will enjoy life. But when he say, don't surrender to Vishnu, he say, Guruji, pranam. That instruction, instruction is not according to Vedas. Guru Sadhu Shastra. You are not Guru anymore. Pranam. Rejected. Now, wives of the Brahmanas. When Krishna and Gopas approach for food, Brahmanas say, don't touch this for Yagya, this for Vishnu. Vishnu is walking, Vishnu is asking. Before you started Yagya, Vishnu came. What a fortune. Even before Yagya, Vishnu has come and you did not recognize him. You are so absorbed in Yagya, you did not recognize him. Can you imagine you are making a lunch, you know, for your relatives who are coming. And relatives, they come one hour earlier and you say, get up, get up, get up, I'm cooking for relatives. A purpose is lost, is meaningless, no? no? But when they approach wives, wives could say, what can we do? Husbands say, no, we are only wives. We have to follow husbands, Sri Dharma. How can we give you already husbands rejected? They'll be angry and family problem and relatives will criticize and will suffer. And what they say? Husbands, pranam, but this time you messed it up. This is Krishna. We are going to do our Dharma. Because there is constitutional duty, there is conditional duty. There is duty that we have according to this bodily condition. We are born in certain family, we are born in certain society, in certain country. So we follow those rules externally. But if those rules are blocking our Krishna consciousness, then we shift to constitutional duty. That Jivara Surupa Hoi Krishna Nitya does. Then we do the soul's dharma. No? What to do? There's a building, and they say, government the office, no entry allowed. And we are distributing books. So what shall I do? My the conditional duty, I have to be good citizens, obey government. My constitutional duty is telling, deliver everyone, give everyone Prabhupada's book. Correct? So, at that moment, we assume that we don't know how to read. And we just went inside and distributed books, and nobody complained. They were happy. So, what to do? Correct? Sometimes we have to break the law. What to do? Life is like this. Correct? So why? To establish the real law. No? It, it, this is possible. To establish the real truth, you can break the lower laws. You know, like ambulance. Rule is right left side of the road in India. And they can go left side, right side, red light, green light, blue light, doesn't matter. They have to save the life. That's the main principle. That's the higher law. The main law is save the life. Second law is if you can, if you can save it by driving left side of the road, all well and good. But if you cannot, you know. One has duty towards parents. One has to take care of mother and father. That is true. But if that circumstance, I cannot practice Krishna Bhakti, then I don't have to take care of mother and father on physical level. By practicing Bhakti, they get benefit. They get, uh, they get the benefit, they get spiritual punya. So we live and serve Krishna with understanding. They are getting punya, they are getting benefit. They are getting blessing. They are advancing. I'm helping them. Actually, I'm helping them. No? So all these things, no? So, so all of them, they rejected. They rejected the, the relatives, the mothers, fathers, gurus, devatas, no? Everything was rejected that we can achieve the desired goal, which is Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Consciousness. So basically, Katwang Maharaj here just give explanation why he's rejecting devatas. Even they are agitated by material condition. How they are going to help me? He knew what is the goal of life. He was devotee. So this is again showing that, that devotee is even higher position than demigod. No? So that's, that's what it is. So we have to hear. We have to hear from the proper guru. We have to hear from parampara. We have to hear pure bhakti. And then we'll not get bewildered. No? So the danger is that we take shelter of some other causes. We take shelter of some other bosses. We take shelter of some other um, 
somebody else than Krishna, thinking they will help us. You know, thinking, oh, insurance will help me. Okay, good to have insurance, but can insurance give me moksha? No. Can make a little comfortable life, okay. No? But what is comfortable life? Any moment, you know? The two, two fellows, two thieves were caught by the king. And king said, tomorrow we are going to cut your head. That's the punishment. But today, whatever you like, we'll provide. Enjoy life. One more day. <laughs> huh? Okay? So, what food you want? So they ordered some food. They brought the food and they, were, they ordered it. fish heads in the curry. Some, you know, fish heads in the curry, something, you know. So they saw this fish head, <coughs> cut heads of fish, you know. So they thought, oh my God, also tomorrow, who <laughs> lost appetite, you know. You know? They said, bring some dancing girl, we will enjoy at least that. So the girl is dancing like this, and then like this, and then like this. <laughs> Why she is showing like this? Why she is showing like this? <laughs> They are going to die. There is no way of enjoying. Yeah? So illusion is thinking we will never die. That's, that's, and it's, a, it's actually not illusion, it's true. Why we have this idea we will never die? Because soul never dies. But this illusion is thinking that this body we will keep forever. That's the illusion. We think we will live in this body forever. We will live, soul is not dead, cannot die. But body we cannot keep. So then why so much endeavor for the body? Why, why, why so much endeavor for the body? Yeah? Why so much endeavor? King Katwanga said, you have one moment, and he immediately gave up everything. That makes sense. But Ramaharsha Rishi, he got blessing. The, how many hairs on the body you have, you know, till the hairs are there, you will live. And his hair will fall off one in the life of Brahma. Brahma lives hundred years, dies one hair of, and he was hairy fellow, described like that in Shastra. He had quite some hair. So how long he will live? And when disciples say, Maharaj, we'll make one cottage for you, Bengal, why you want to waste time making, anyway, we are temporary here in material world. He also reacted the same like Atwang Maharaj. He could, he lived, he lived longer than Brahmas. Hundreds of Brahmas he've seen how long he lived, and he thought, why unnecessary in they were building a house, you know? Yeah, because mud cottage or whatever, touch roof or whatever. He didn't want to put two palm, dry palm branches, you know, above his head, you know? Mm -hmm. What is use? Temporary we are here. Focus on the Lord. Just see, it's not just, hey, Katanga knew, I will also do. Tell me, doctor tells me, you have Gokul, you have one Muhurta, okay? Sit, Hare Krishna, I'll also do. Yeah. But I don't know whether I have one muhurta. <laughs> Nobody can tell. Yeah? So that's the point. That is not just because he had one muhurta, he, he just gave it up. But he was Krishna conscious. Actually, he was Krishna conscious. He was devout, then he was able to give up. And then when difficulty comes, like this, some situation, we always have to see what is best for Krishna consciousness, you know? When a difficulty comes, then we take shelter of uh, astrologer. Mm -hmm. We go to astrologer, you know? Oh, and then astrologer, yes. Sir, so much problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, Rahu Ketu, you are going through a very bad period. Yeah. That's, that's the horoscope from the beginning. As soon as you are born in material world, sir, you are going through a very bad period. I can tell you, I'll open astrology booth. You know, whoever comes, phew, very bad. You're going to die. <laughs> Whatever plans you're making, you know. <laughs> you know, you may pretend, but the reality is like this. But fools, they don't think of that. Fools, they're like a rabbit. Rabbit see the wolf and then close his eyes by the ears, you know, as if wolf will disappear. <laughs> but wolf will not disappear. So the practice, it's a practice, all life we have to practice. But what use if we take shelter of devatas, if we take shelter of, of uh, astrologer? Huh? Can he help himself, astrologer? 
Huh? Yeah? He cannot help himself. Huh? Best things are those poor men is sitting on the side of the road with a parrot and huh. some cards, you know. He is poor, hardly he can manage one meal per day, you know. And he tells you, card, you are going to become very rich. <laughs> Why don't you see your situation? Why don't you help yourself, you know? He said, I'm helping, I'm cheating people like you. <laughs> you know? So this is the problem, you know, that, you know, then we take... And also this uh, Krishna was speaking uh, on his class about this proprietorship also. That's also another one, you know. We know we are temporary here. Why you claim? I'm owner of land, I'm owner of house, I'm owner of this, I'm owner... Why you claim? Krishna is owner. If you can use it using Krishna's service, then you get benefit. More you use in Krishna's service, the better. No? The more, the better. He given an example, Kaluvacha Sridhar. 50% of whatever he earned, 50% he given. And Prabhupada asked, demanded at the beginning of the movement, he asked, 50%, whatever profit, 50% you give to the movement. Some disciples give 100%, like Brahmananda, you know. Hippies were joining at the beginning, and movement didn't have money. We had to pay rent, we have to cook prasadam, you know. There was no money. So Brahmananda joined, oh Swamiji, I like this philosophy, I like to join. Uh, so what are you doing? I'm a teacher. And Prabhupada, oh, you have a job. It was all other hippies, they were jobless. And so he, oh, you have a job. This is your devotional service. You work and 100% money give to temple. And he did. But was not like, oh, this is not example. You see, Prabhupada said that your work is your devotion. Your, his work was his devotion because he given all money to Prabhupada. Then his devotion. Not that, you know, I bank balance and on my mercy, whenever I want, I give a little donation to temple, you know. I put 55,000 in the bank and 5,000 give to temple and call it devotional service. Ha! Ah. Mm-hmm. That's not what is true. It's not true. You know? That's not how it works. 100%. Another San Francisco temple didn't have money. Prabhupada said, okay, everybody get job. Same thing. Everybody has to collect money. We cannot run the temple. So Tamil Krishna got job in uh, some photo studio. Vishnu Janu was selling flutes, playing flutes on the street and selling, making money. Gargamuni started some, selling some agarbati, something, I don't know what he did. He did. Gargamani, he knew how to make money. Yeah. So, Sasaru Maharaj was working in the post office. Sasaru Maharaj got job in post office. But 100% all money went to temple. Nobody kept one rupee. Nobody kept. Even for buying the clothes, they would ask temple president, can I get money buying the clothes? No? No. And then the uh, Jayananda Prabhu, who was also driving taxi and running the temple and, you know, trying to get everything for Krishna. He didn't want to spend, his pants were torn, worn out completely, his pants. And temple president said, come on, you know, you buy the pants, he given money. So he went to shop and he stolen the pants. He said, how can I spend on myself? And he got caught. Owner caught him, they put case on him, he went to the police, he went to the courtroom, and judge was like, why you are stealing? He said, we are monks. Temple president gave him money. So how can I use for myself? I have to use for God. And judge said, this is saintly person, release him. <laughs> and the shop owner said, please keep the pen. Just, but he was honest, he was not tricking. He, he honestly had his consciousness, and you see, immediately Krishna in the heart of everyone reciprocate. Judge said, this is a saintly person, this is not a thief. And owner felt so bad. Oh, the, the, I caught the sadhu, I caught the priest, you know. Anytime you want, please, you take pen, shirt, whatever you want. And this is how it works. This is how Krishna takes care when we surrender, you know. But when difficulty comes immediately, instead of more chanting, we stop chanting. Instead of more coming to temple, we stop coming to temple. Instead of thinking, oh, it's my problem, my car, always somebody else's problem. You know? And who will help me? Astrologer will help me. Guru will not help, Parampara will not help, Holy Name will not help, Astrologer will help me. 
lack of faith, neophyte, Kanishta Adhikari. Kanishta Adhikari, Bhakti San Saraswati Thakur gives definition, Kanishta Adhikari. One who thinks that practicing bhakti and also having material asset is important. This is Kanishta Adhikari. You chant, but good house is also important, bank balance also important, degree also important. That is definition of Kanishtha Adhikar, neophyte devotee. Still he is taking shelter of material assets. Still he is taking shelter of devata. You know? They keep little Ganapati in the house. You are initiated devotee, why are you keeping Ganapati in the house? He is a great devotee, you know? <laughs> he is, but not you. <laughs> He is great devotee, not you. No? no? So, this is the thing, this is what we learn here, no? That even devatas were rejected because they were not helping in Krishna Bhakti. So, that's the principle. Anything that disturbs us in Krishna Bhakti, they should be rejected. And anybody helping us in Krishna Bhakti should be accepted. But mind always goes, what is pleasing, what is not pleasing. That's the issue. We are always thinking, oh. Another illusion is that when you come to Ishkon, everything will be fine. All our devotees, all our, all our devotees, you're reading books, but mostly what you're reading books are definitions of pure devotees. <laughs> so when is all our pure devotees, then everything is blissful. But when we are all neophyte devotees, then everything is mess. But what do we do? We have to continue, no? We have no alternative, no other option. Krishna consciousness is all the option and the option is get purified. Get, take every difficulty more impetus to remember Krishna, no? And the holy name is so powerful, remembering Krishna. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, these three are so powerful, that can deliver one. Prabhupada says, in this lifetime, if we follow four regulative principles, change 16 ounces, we'll go home back to Godhead. No? How this Katwanga Maharaj, first time in Bhagavatam, where is it mentioned? It's mentioned by Shukadeva Goswami. When Parikshi says, I have only seven days. Oh, you have so much time. Katwanga Maharaj has one moment and he succeeded. Don't worry. So you see how he's pacified him, encouraged him. Oh, you have seven days. We can do so much in seven days. <laughs> Katwanga Maharaj had one moment, one muhurta. He used the word muhurta. At best, you can say he had 48 minutes. <laughs> if you really want to stretch his time, you know. So, then, then King Parikh should say, Oh, this is good. Spiritual life is so good that in short time I can achieve perfection. No? So we are lucky this lifetime. We came in touch with Prabhupada's teaching. We came in touch with Krishna consciousness. We should really utilize every moment. We should not take shelter of devatas. We should not take shelter of material assets. We should not make material schemes and plans how to make our life better. Life will not become better. <laughs> there is no way, you know. So better make Krishna Bhakti better. Better make chanting better. Make reading better. Make dancing better. Make serving better. Then you are better. Otherwise, all these other betters are just chains pulling us. One more chain. Attachment to family. Attach we got a dog. I had to protect family property. We had got a dog. One more chain. We got a car. One more chain. We got a cell phone. One more chain. We got a nice neighborhood. One more chain. I got a new job. One more chain. Got a second wife. Nooses, chain around the neck. This is what it is. Oh, I'm better. Hi, <laughs> so many chains on me. <laughs> How you are better? How is it better? Yeah? It's not better. Better to always chant, always serve, always be in association in devotees, and that improve that betterment. Everything else is bluff. Everything else is maya. Everything else is obstacle on devotion service and should be rejected like a tongue Maharaj rejected. So that's it. But we learn what I've seen from this shloka. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Gaur Premananda. Any questions, comments, realizations? <laughs> yes. 
<coughs> you said about taking shelter in the first college in the Lord in Krishna. Some people will get to construction. You see, sometimes workers, when they start some work, uh, normally they say that uh, if you start from this particular corner, right. Shalimula, then work will go smoothly. Right. And then they have this impression of, if you cut lemon, right. before doing any missionary work, anything, then nothing will happen. They have this idea right. of permission. Right. You see, devotees also many times getting this mentality. Right. And uh, they also start saying every time before you do any issue, you start on lemon and start. Then right. Then our work will be, right. you know, will, will not be any issue. So how to understand this? Is that? That, that's again illusion. It's Maya, you know. This, these are all rules coming from Karmakanda portion of the Vedas. All this, that you start building one corner or particular day, you know, on a you know, particular side and then you have to do little puja and, uh, you know, cut the lemon, cut the coconut, break the pumpkin, something. So these are all rules of Vedas, but these are for material prosperity. But once we are building Krishna's temple, any side you start is auspicious. Any time you start is auspicious. Any cut lemon, make lemonade, lemonade and offer to Lord, why not? We have no problem cutting lemons, we are also cutting lemons. But understanding is not that, you know, the, that act, that ritual will save me, but remembering Lord will save me. So what we do every time when these workers, they feel sentimental, or oh, we should do little puja and we should cut the lemon and break coconut, we all come. So we do the kirtan, they do the puja. But we are the pujaris. This is real puja. Sankirtan yagya is real puja by Lord is pleased. And we remember the Lord. And they remember the lemon. You know, means you understand. The problem is devotees are and they get carried away. Devotees get carried away by rituals. Therefore, you have to, they have to come on class and hear, hey, don't cut the lemons unnecessarily. Cut or make lemonade over to Krishna. At least offer to Krishna. Krishna squeezes sometimes lemon over his doll. You know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Dear Prabhu Pranam, could you kindly elaborate on the proper use of astrology? A few, a few years ago, Guru Maharaj has also uh, performed yajnas to counter an inauspicious astrological right. period. What should be a devotional approach to the astrology? Right. Devotion approach to astrology is that um, we understand that astrology is Vedic science, okay? And they were good astrologers. Where they are now, I cannot tell you. I, I, I do not know. Really, I cannot tell you. Okay, this is true, really Vedic astrologers, and it will work. It will work, you know. What, what, uh, you know, difficult to find good astrologers, first, rule number one. Second, I asked Guru Maharaj that how much we take advantage of astrology in Krishna consciousness. The Maharaj says, we don't. Then, unless somebody has really big, big, big problem, if you see that something is repeatedly again and again happening and something is not coming out, you may consult astrologers to understand, is there anything some planet constellation obstructing you. You know, when you are extreme case, when the mind is disturbed or some really again and again same problem, you consult astrologers to know what is it. But the solution is not what the astrologer will tell you. The solution is Krishna consciousness. There's no other solution, you know. So again, when we take, when we know, okay, I have this dosha and I go into bad period, then we take Vaishnava remedy also. So there are few devotees, astrologers, who will recommend you Vaishnava remedy. They do Sudarshana Homam or Nasinga Homam, or they will tell you, uh, our Shyama Sundar astrology will tell you, read this chapter of Bhagavatam, Varaha Lila, that will help you. Read this chapter, Vamana Lila, that will help you. If he tells even to karmis as a solution, remedy, you read Krishna Lila. So we are telling every day, read Krishna Leela. Every day we should read Prabhupada's book. Every day we should chant, we should serve. So, thing is that you can use it if you're really having difficulty. But what is the danger? The danger is like this. That the astrologer advise you to go for demigod worship or some karmakanda solution. 
then you are taking your faith, you are getting faith in karma kanda, in demigod worship. Karmi astrologer will suggest you Ganapati watch. What you will do? And he will say, unless you watch Ganapati, this problem will not go away. What you will do? Will you have faith to continue worshipping Nasingade and Krishna? Or you will scumble? This is the problem. Then he will tell you where the some ruby or pearl or diamond or whatever. Then that will be important for you. And Guru will say, where Tulsi Mala change holy name, Nama Chintamani. Already Chintamani you are wearing. Why you want to wear any other lower jewelry? Correct? You wear golden earrings and plastic necklace. Doesn't match. You know? So you see, then you get faith in the stone. Thinking stone will help. Parampara will not help. Guru will not help. Holy name cannot help. Stone will help. You know? So you can use it if you are going to remain Krishna conscious. But if your faith is going to shake, then why to do that? Huh? So it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. And then some devotees went so much into astrology. We had one devotee with us, and I cannot mention his name. He's a senior, respected person. And uh, he went with us for traveling book distribution. So he stopped the vehicle in front of entrance gate. He said, now it's not auspicious time. We have to wait 15 minutes. We are in front of gate just to come out of temple. We are all sitting in the van. And he said, if we go out, it will be a mess. So Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Vikash Maharaj was there. He saw the van, it's 15 minutes. So he came from the temple to the van. Hey, Gokul, what? I was driving. Gokul, what happened? I said, Prabhuji said that this is, uh, now Muhurta is bad and very inauspicious timing. We go out, some accident will happen. Accident in Sanketan. Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sanketan. Open the gate. Send us out in most inauspicious time. Two sets of Bhagavatam went that day. I think it was good. So you see, same Guru Maharaj rejected the auspicious, inauspicious time in Krishna service. You know? Outside people say, Kadashi is very bad. Yeah, it's bad for anything material. It's meant to absorb spiritually. You know? Now the word is, oh, Ekadashi is bad. How is bad? Ekadashi is Vishnu's day. Ekadashi is day when we more remember. We less we eat, less we sleep, more we think, more we chant, more we serve. So one has to, to keep a little balance with astrology. But if you advocate it on the classes, Bhagavatam classes, people will misunderstand and misuse. Like Shiva worship. We respect Shiva, but we are not going to advocate it on Bhagavatam class. Same thing. Astrology is there. Somewhere, somewhere there in the corner, mini, mini, tiny, tiny, this much. One half, one quarter, one muhurta of mm. Nothing. This much astrology we use. So, that's what we understand. Don't feel hurt. Don't feel disturbed. All the astrologers are flipping out now. But just see what Prabhupada did. They, when did Prabhupada say, go to this astrologer, go to that astrologer? He said, go and chant. Chant more, read more, serve more. No? That's what Prabhupada said. Did he say? Uh, there was one incident there when astrologer was asking all the devotees to show hands. Yeah. Prabhupada said, just clap your hands and keep them in. Yeah. Yes. Prabhupada said, by clapping, kirtan, all lines will change. Mm -hmm. Another example is Bhakti Vikash Maharaj. Since you quoted Bhakti Vikash Maharaj, I'll tell you another example. Famous astrologer came to Amdava temple. <coughs> So everybody was wow around him and asking questions. He would just look and tell you so many things. Just by walking, you know, people will show their hand and he will tell this, tell that. So they brought him to Guru Maharaj. So they say, Maharaj, he's famous astrologer. Maharaj say, oh, I'm also astrologer. And astrologer, oh, Maharaj, I'm very happy. You are also astrologer. Yeah, yeah, show me your hand, I will tell you. <laughs> so men immediately put their hand in front of Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, look. Guru Maharaj looked and said, Oh, if you don't chant Hare Krishna, you're going to die and take birth again. <laughs> so look, this is what I learned firsthand. I was there. So this much I understood about astrology. So. Hare Krishna. Take, we should encourage each other to take shelter of the holy name. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha 
पूर्ण शुद्ध मिथ्या मुक्त अभिनाथवान नाम नाम टेकिंग शेल्टर हॉल ने मीन्स टेकिंग शेल्टर ऑफ कृष्ण एंड देन एवरीथिंग हाउस विल फॉल इन द प्लेस तो अरे ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच शिल प्रभुपाद की जाए श्रीमद भागवतम की जाए रोज प्रेम